now that we have a blank slate, we'll start with this bracket first. And since this is a disc brake spindle, there's gonna be a gap up here. So that's where spacer comes in. With this bracket on, just snugged, this bolt, I've got, I don't know if you can see, I've got some washers in there, I got like four, because the other side had five. So now that that on there, I put the rotor on there, and then I'll show you what to do with the caliper. I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, calipers in here with the pads, because you need to have the pads on there to check the spacing. So, just pull these little pins out. I usually use like one of these little guys. Pull it out, put the pads in, and then you can just kind of finger press those back in. So I'm gonna put the pads in real quick, and then we'll take it down to the rotor. Pads are in there. Don't freak out if these shoot across the room and you lose it because they do give you a little pack with uh, like four or more in there. So I didn't lose any. Just when you pop it out, use your finger to cover so it doesn't shoot out. Before I put this caliper on, I want to show you what I'm talking about with the first gap. All right, so caliper bracket right there. Um, this breaks, you have to use the spacer up here, right there. Drum brakes, you don't, I think. Yeah, drum brakes, it's flush, I guess. So I'm gonna make sure that the gap between the caliper and the rotor is the same, like here, and here, that's why you use spacers right right there, those brass looking ones. So now that that's kind of equally spaced, then I can put the caliper on and we can see how it's spaced on the brake pads. Okay, rotors on, tighten down. Won't spin, super tight. But if you notice right here, this pad right here is loose. That one's tight. That means this caliper has to go that way, that way. And then that means you need to add spacers in there. So that is, that's pretty dang close. I'm gonna try one spacer first and I'll show you where to put it. So the caliper, mounts to the outside of the caliper bracket. In order to push the caliper that way, you'll need to put a spacer right there, which is putting like this spacer right here in between the caliper and the bracket pushes the caliper that way. When I say I'm adding a spacer, that's what I'm doing right here, is these provided washers. All right, here's where the annoying part really comes into play. It turns, that's two spacers. It really needs a third, but this gap on the lower pad is a lot bigger than the gap on the top pad. So in order to <laughs> remedy that, I probably need to take out one of these spacers down here for the bracket so it Oh no, I need to add one more. I need to add a spacer so it comes out like this, which will tip the rotor and close that gap. And then I'll probably need to add one more spacer to the brake pads or to the caliper. So this is what sucks is taking this on and off so many times, fitting, test fitting, because getting the washers between the caliper and the bracket suck. It is a pain. So I need to take this all apart, put a spacer down there, Respace it here, check it again. It's still grabbing. It should spin freely. So let me readjust this all again. This is where it really sucks. I literally pulled this off eight, nine, ten times, and finally <laughs> it's good. 
in here a tight, a very fractional grab. I'm gonna let it wear itself in. There's no way I can adjust it any better than that. I'm limited by the shims. And unless I'm gonna go like a, these are 0.032 shims. They're so thin. There's like, if you're gonna go thinner, there's no way. So this is it. Now I gotta pull it all apart one more time so I can lock tight the spindle bracket bolts on, tighten the back steering arm bolts, and put it together for foul time with grease and everything in the, in the bearing and torquing it down. So now I'm gonna pull it all back apart. Everything is all wrapped up. Now that it's all torqued down, oh, I actually bled the brakes a little bit, so it's probably where they're grabbing a little bit, but before I bled the brakes, this thing would spin perfectly awesome. So they're basically all done. I still got to bleed a little bit more, but a few things that I'll just show you real quick that you might not catch if you're not really reading the instructions, but um, everything looks symmetrical, but there is an arrow on the rotor to show you which way to go. Also on the caliper, there's one larger piston on one end and they want that on the exit point. So that'd be like over here. So they are side specific on the, on the calipers. So just note that. Um, note that also, um, if your car has seven sixteenths studs, that these are now half inch studs. So you might need new lug nuts. Uh, the brake line is on. If you uh, are able to get your brake line off, brake line off without vice grips, you're living the dream. But yeah, I had to use vice grips on that one, but. But line is on and I'll cycle the wheel, make sure that it clears everything. But this is kind of how I have it orientated right now, just down and back up. So yeah, they are basically done. These are probably the most annoying brakes I've ever done in my life. <laughs> they uh, take a lot more precision than far as getting lined up than anything else I've ever done. So uh, yeah, but hey, now I can say that I actually have little brakes when I show them my master cylinder. Um, yeah, I already got the uh, old stuff up for sale. I'm not going to ship these, but you know, these did fine. Like they, they really did fine. I didn't have any trouble with them, but I always wanted the bigger brakes. So, and then now I got to do brakes again on the new project vehicle we got. So. I'll be doing that again. And then for the uh, the coolant thing, so once I get the brakes totally bled, I'm actually gonna bleed the clutch because the clutch has never been bled properly. And so the pedal is like way down at the floor. So once I get those both bled, then I can uh, get the wheels back on and then I'm gonna address the cooling system. I did buy this new tool from Harbor Freight. So, Hopefully this is a total pile of crap, otherwise I'll take it back. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, this might not have been the right one. I do not see the radiator caps on this one, like... Yeah, I don't know, I'm gonna have to pull it up. I might have to open it and look at it. But basically, I'm just gonna fill the radiator back up, pressurize it, force the leaks, because before it was leaking when it was all hot, so... This way I can make it leak when it's cold. And then uh, the car will be back to being a daily driver. <laughs> daily driver. <laughs> uh, that's funny. That's funny. Teaser shot. <laughs> 